Hi, I'm Lee Sloan from Resonate Church in Anchorage, Alaska, and I just wanted to share an encouraging message with you. I want to welcome you to my kitchen. This is my kitchen. And, you know, a kitchen just speaks of need, doesn't it? A kitchen speaks of a place that you go to get your needs met, right? If you're hungry, obviously you go there if you're hungry, but sometimes we go there to even get our emotional needs met. You know, we kind of like, we're, we're bummed out about something. So we look in the freezer to see if maybe there's some ice cream in there that we can, you know, kind of make us feel better. Um, so we go here to this kitchen for a lot of different reasons. And so today I want to talk about need and how we get our needs met through God. And I want to direct your attention to a story. It's found in 1 Kings 17. And it's that familiar story of the, the widow of Zarephath. You may never have heard of it. If you haven't heard of it, go and look it up. But I'm just going to recap it really quick. It's in the time of Elijah. And Elijah is just starting his prophetic career. It's not very lucrative at this point in time. He, the, one of the first things he does is he declares a famine over Israel. And this is not fun. Um, so that there wouldn't be any rain and the brooks were going to dry up and everything was going to basically die. And so this woman is living in the land of Zarephath. It doesn't even mention her name in the Bible, but she is a widow. And widows in those days, they couldn't make a living. And basically the only option for a lot of them was to go and gather the grain that the harvesters left over. And that was it for them. And so she... After many days of not having any rain, everything started to dry up. And you know what? Her career of gathering grain was the first thing to dry up. And so she started to get a little scared. She started to find that she was having less and less flour and grain to, to grind into flour. And so she, she had to face the facts. And she looked in her cupboard. And when she looked in there... This is my flower jar. She found that she didn't have very much flour. Now, man, I do not bake very often, and so I have very, very little flour. She had a little bit more than I have because she was going to make a loaf, and she decided that she could only make have enough to make one loaf for she and her son. Apparently, she had a dependent son, and then she was just going to die. She was just ready to give it up. And, um, you know, all of us can relate because we all have needs in our lives. Maybe we're not that destitute um, financially or physically, but we all have needs and we all have times in our lives where we just want to give up, right? So what she does is she goes to gather sticks. And this is really a hopeless act, but she does it. She goes to gather sticks and she, who does she find there but Elijah, the very man who decreed this word of the Lord over the land. And I don't know if she recognized him, but she must have known something about him being the man of God. And he says to her, excuse me, woman, can I have some, a little bit of water? And she goes to get it like a good woman. And she, he says, oh, by the way, can I have a little piece of bread as well? And I can imagine what she was thinking, maybe wanting to wring his neck a little bit at the situation that she was facing, but she just calmly says, no, in fact, I, I don't have any bread. I just have a little bit of flour and a little bit of oil in a jar. I'm going to make it and bake it, and then my son and I, we are going to die. So thank you very much. Have a nice day. And Elijah looks at her, and he says, you know what, I want you to bake that bread for me. I want you to do it anyway, and I want you to make a little loaf for me, and then make some for yourself, but I promise you, if you bring that loaf to me first, that your jar will never run dry. Your oil and your flour will last this entire famine. And she takes the little bit of faith that she has, and she does it. She does everything he says, and everything Elijah says ends up coming through, through for her. She he ends up living in her household for quite a long time, and her jar never runs dry. And so I was thinking about the story, and, you know, not many of us, you know, a lot of us can just go buy flour. That's not really the point. But the point is that we all have needs, and we all have places, jars, so to speak, of emptiness in our lives, don't we? Whether it's um, 
feeling inadequate in our job, like we want some respect in our jobs, or maybe maybe it's at home with, with our kids. We just feel so inadequate and we don't know what to do and we feel empty inside. Well, you know, it just doesn't make sense what God asks us to do with that emptiness. You know, so we focus on what we don't have. And it's, it's human to focus on what we don't have. But you know what? God looks at that jar a lot differently. God looks at that jar as an opportunity for you to provide for someone else. And so he, t he tells us, he asks us for the unthinkable. He asks us to go into that jar, into our places of need, and he says, dole out something for someone else. Give from that very place of inadequacy, that very place of need that you are so desperate about in your life. You know, if you are desperate for recognition at work, go and give some recognition to someone else. Whether you feel like they're doing as good of a job as you're doing or not, go, go to the boss and say, hey man, that person deserves something because they are doing an awesome job. And watch how God is able to fill that jar when you are freely giving of it. And he might not do it all at once, but you'll realize that your jar won't run quite as dry. And, and you'll always have a supply, always a place to give from. And so I just want to challenge you with that. Whatever situation you have in your life, whatever need is you're focused on today, will you do the unthinkable and just give from that place of need? You know, I preached this message several weeks ago and people actually ended up taking it to heart and it was amazing what happened when in their own way God gave them ways to give to dig really deep and give from that place of desperation that place of need and it was so amazing how God filled up their needs and God supplied the very thing that they were struggling and striving after and so I would love I, I anticipate your testimony if you take this to heart I would love for you to share with us what God has done in your life. So if you could, do us the favor of going to ResonateAK.org and share with us the amazing things that God is doing in your life. We would love to rejoice with you. And so thanks for listening. Thanks for sharing this with others. God bless you on your journey to knowing and loving God.